grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The epistle for Reformation Sunday was chosen because the early Lutherans of the 16th and 17th centuries, they saw God's word being fulfilled right before their very eyes. They read the words of John's prophecy about an angel, also known as a messenger, flying in the midst of heaven, preaching the everlasting gospel, and they tied to that the preaching of Martin Luther. Now, Luther wasn't an angel, not like most think of angels, but that man, like all pastors in God's church, was called and ordained to the office of holy ministry. And then, of course, as you know, on October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed a list of 95 theses to the door at the castle church there in Wittenberg. It's hard to imagine for those of us used to reading theology by Facebook or some sort of tweet, if you call it that anymore, that there were 95 theses. And they were all written in Latin. Done so that the common folk, they wouldn't notice much. But it was the theologians that Martin Luther was after. He wanted them to take an interest. What Luther set his sight on the most was the sale of indulgences, forgiveness in turn for money. A coin for just a few more ladder rungs into heaven. Yet keep in mind, all of this started in the heart of a pastor. A pastor who didn't want the people of his congregation led astray. A pastor who didn't want money and indulgences to replace repentance and Christ and the blood of Christ. Now look, these 95 theses were not and are not the founding document of any Lutheran church. They're not included in our book of Concord. And I dare say any of you have ever read them, probably not recently. Why not? It's because the gospel does not show through them as brilliantly as you might expect. In fact, the 95 make for an entirely Roman Catholic document. The first thesis is good, for in it Luther states, Our Lord and Master Jesus Christ, when he said, Do penance, will that the whole life of believers should be repentance. But the rest of them, well, let's just say that Luther wasn't quite Lutheran enough. Not yet. Not yet. And with the posting of the 95, Luther didn't intend to start a church just as we were talking about over in the adult Bible class, he was not looking to start a movement. He wanted to see his beloved church cleansed, reformed. For the state of the church was horrendous, both in its teaching and in its living out the teaching. For example, salvation by works was being taught. This is why we started our service today. By what? By grace you are saved. Salvation by works was being taught, and this was something that Luther wholeheartedly believed until he realized he couldn't do it. Luther's question of, how can I find a gracious God? It remained elusive to him, and no answer was given, and despair, despair almost gobbled him up. Something else Rome taught was that saintly men or women, like the blessed Virgin Mary could share some of their merit, merit that they had earned by living a righteous life. You would get, of course, some of their merit if these saints were venerated and prayed to, which, of course, led to idolatry. Purgatory was invented out of thin air. Papal authority was placed over biblical authority, and now indulgences are being sold to the masses. 
Others had pointed out Rome's abuses before, but God used Luther as his instrument. An angel of God, a messenger of God, among many whose initial complaint in the 95 Theses was that forgiveness was far too easy. All you had to do was put a little bit of money in the plate and all was well and Christ gets left behind. Luther's theses started something much bigger than the attack on indulgences. For the same God who thought it was a good idea to lay his only begotten son in a manger, only this God would think it good to use a half-baked list of theses to forever change the world and bring his beloved gospel to your ears. After God, the Holy Spirit enlightened Luther with the gospel, that being the free forgiveness of sins on account of Christ, Luther rejoiced. Salvation was not something to be grasped, earned, merited, or achieved. And thus the old chains, they fell off. This is why the, the Lutheran rose that you see so many, that's why it's a rose, that's why it's a flower. Because the gospel opened him up to a God that he had never known before. Luther wanted everybody to know that God's word declares you righteous and when God's word declares that, you are indeed righteous. He wanted everybody to know the peace of Christ, of his word and his works. So no, Luther would say, do not trust in a piece of paper, even if, even if it's been signed by the Pope. Do not trust in what your money can buy you. Do not trust in your resume of good works or what you think heaven owes you. Do not trust in your so-called decision for Jesus. Do not trust in your moral self-improvement or your sanctification. Don't even trust in the genuineness of your own repentance. For only Christ, only Christ saves. And he saves you. If salvation depends in any way on you or your doing, then it is a work of the law. And by works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. I set on yourself will only find sin and damnation, but I set on Christ will only find forgiveness, life, and salvation. So this is what the Reformation is all about. Not a German monk nailing 95 theses to a church door. No, the Reformation is about a man, capital M man, a God-man being nailed to the cross where your sins are utterly, entirely, and completely forgiven. And this forgiveness is yours. It's his gift to you. Salvation is his gift to you. Eternal life is his gift to you. And his cup that will be put to your lips in just a few moments, that's his gift as well. And so for those of us who have been given the treasure of the gospel and have been given entrance into the kingdom of heaven, let us, beloved, this day give thanks. Give thanks to God for his grace in giving us these wonderful good uh, gifts. And let us see to it that by God's grace, we do not take this treasure for granted, but we stand upon it just as Luther once stood. We powerfully proclaim it and we steadfastly believe it. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand together.